The show opens outside a massive and highly guarded corporate building where a luxurious car pulls up. From it, a well-dressed man steps out and assists a blonde young woman. She is Lin, the daughter of the chairman of the Hong Fu Group, and he is Joe, her personal bodyguard. As the duo heads to a crucial meeting in the building, Joe's phone rings and it's Lin's fiance, Chi Shan, on the line. He is in the hot seat with the board members and wants to prevent Lin from attending the meeting. However, she is determined to help him and enters the building. Joe tries to accompany her, but security prevents him from entering, so he places an alarm device around her neck, telling her to use it if she feels threatened. Following this, Lin is escorted to the meeting room where the board members are trying to coerce Jashan into doing something against his will. They insist that Lin sign a document to transfer company ownership, as they believe a blind person cannot lead the Hong Fu group. Through their conversation, we learn that her father passed away suddenly. Lin angrily refuses to transfer the ownership, but they physically force her to leave her fingerprint on the document. Panicked, she presses the alarm button, and as soon as she does, Joe receives a notification and fights his way into the meeting room to rescue her. He then takes Lin to a quiet room, but his actions trigger painful memories of her father's murder. We are then shown a flashback where Lin discovers Joe threatening her father. This memory makes Lin believe that Joe might be responsible for her father's death, and she falls unconscious on the spot. In the following scene, Lin wakes up at home and is startled to find Joe by her side. She firmly tells him that he's no longer needed and is fired. However, Joe plays a recording of her father's voice, revealing that he was hired to protect Lin and that his contract hasn't expired yet. She believes she saw him on the night of her father's death, so to dispel her suspicions, Lin asks him to remove his clothes so she can examine the wounds on his body. Joe is puzzled by Lin's request, but after she insists, he reluctantly takes off his shirt, revealing numerous scars on his body. Lin touches one of the scars and becomes even more convinced that he may be the one responsible for her father's death. Frustrated, Joe takes her hands and guides him across his scarred body, explaining that it's normal for bodyguards to have such scars. Meanwhile, Chishan is beaten up and released by the board members. Lin's best friend, Yu Wei, is tending to his wounds. Though he tries to keep his distance from her, Yu Wei approaches him and says that it doesn't matter since his fiance can't see. Right then, Lin, with some difficulty, makes her way to Chishan and he quickly assists her. She expresses her suspicions about Joe and asks him to call the police. Chishan comforts her and explains that on the day that her father died, she accidentally hit her head, which led to her blindness. He also assures her that there was no one inside her father's room on that day. He then encourages her to take her medication and rest. Later, a sleepless Lin suddenly remembers that her father's study has a surveillance camera and bolts up to retrieve it. However, Joe is also in the study trying to find some important documents. Lin enters and initially doesn't notice Joe, but she accidentally bumps into a bookshelf. Concerned for her safety, he reaches out to protect her, which alerts Lin to his presence, making her even more suspicious of him. Overhearing their conversation, Yue and Chishan arrive at the scene and ask what happened, but Lin simply asks her fiancé to retrieve the surveillance camera from the bookshelf. This surprises him, and when he hesitates to comply, Joe takes the camera down and hands it to Lin. Before she has a chance to walk away with it, Yu Wei says that she will watch the footage and tell her what it contains. She then takes the camera and leaves, making Joe suspicious of her intentions. Later, after watching the video, Yu Wei approaches Lin and explains that the footage only shows her father, Lin Gufo, and no one else. At the same time, Chishan cautiously asks Lin if she knows of any other surveillance cameras in the house, but she denies knowing of any other cameras. Chishan then suggests she get some rest, because it's very late. Late at night, he meets with Yue in private and takes the surveillance footage from her. The letter mentions that she deleted all the potentially harmful footage related to Chishan and can't understand why he doesn't trust her. Clearly, the two are up to something. In the next scene, Joe returns home and unties his friend, the real Joe, who is bound to the couch. Here we discover that the one pretending to be Lin's bodyguard is actually Moyao. His father, who was the chairman of King Group, and Lin Gufo were business associates. However, their partnership soured, resulting in the tragic death of Moyao's father. Now, our hero wants to find the real cause behind his father's demise. This is why he assumed the identity of his friend to get close to Lin. The following morning, Yu Wei acts all caring and offers Lin some kongi. However, she hands her a bowl that's too hot, causing her to nearly drop it. Later, Lin decides to meet her former house nanny, Wang Ma, for information. As her bodyguard, Mo Yao naturally accompanies her. When they reach Wang Ma's door, Miao senses that something is wrong inside. He asks Lin to wait outside while he investigates. 
However, there's a trap to ambush them, both inside and outside the house. Mao takes care of the attackers inside, but when he tries to find Lin, he realizes that she's surrounded by several dangerous men. Fortunately, he's able to rescue her from the thugs. In the process, however, he receives several cuts to his body. Lin senses fresh blood on his back and faints. Worried, Moyao immediately brings her home and contacts the family's private doctor. On the other hand, Chishan blames Yue for letting Lin get into such a dangerous situation. He emphasizes that if anything happens to her, all their efforts will be wasted. In response, Yue reassures him that she has a plan and suggests blaming the whole incident on debt collectors. Once again, it becomes evident that they were the ones who planned the ambush. The next day, while Mayao is resting on the couch, Zhou approaches him and talks about his loyalty towards Lin. He brings up the incident from two years ago, where Moyao nearly died trying to save Lin, and now he's injured again. However, Moyao doesn't want his friend to interfere and asks him to leave. In the following scene, he teaches Lin to eat on her own, and she quickly learns to negotiate the utensils by herself. Moyao is pleased with her progress, but still suggests she be cautious with the people around her. Just then, a servant informs him that Chishan has arrived with the funeral home staff to discuss Lin's father's burial arrangements. At the meeting, Moyao suggests the West Mountain, pointing out a location halfway up the hill with a beautiful view, and Lin agrees to it. Following the burial ceremony, Lin mournfully touches her father's portrait and cries. To lift her spirits, Moyao brings her a bowl of tofu soup and begins sharing how he felt when his father died. Upon discovering that Moyao has also lost his father, Lin wants to know more, but he doesn't want to discuss it. As their conversation unfolds, Lin expresses her determination to find her father's murderer. Moyao asks, asks if she suspects him, but she doesn't give a clear answer. The next day, a servant hands Lin a flash drive stating that someone dropped it off and left without explanation. Lin asks if the person said anything, and the servant replies that the person uttered one cryptic sentence, Joe is not Joe. Following this, Lin hands the USB drive to Yu Wei, asking her to help view the contents. Yu Wei inserts the USB drive into her computer and discovers information about a bodyguard named Mo Yao. The file contains details about his height, weight, and educational background, but lacks a photograph. It does, however, mention surgery and a scar on his lower abdomen. Later in the evening, Lin sits on the couch, patiently awaiting Moyao's arrival. When he shows up, she invites him to join her for a drink. Moyao quickly becomes inebriated and lies motionless on the couch. Using this opportunity, Lin unbuttons his shirt and begins moving her hand downward to check the scar on his abdomen. However, Moyao regains his senses and stops her. Panicked, Lin says that she only wants to confirm his true identity, as she is fed up with all the mystery surrounding her father's death. Hearing this, Moyao finally comes clean and admits that he's not Zhou. He is also adamant that he had no role in her father's death. He tells her that she can dismiss him at any time, but the people around her may not be trustworthy. When Lin asks who he's referring to, he doesn't answer and walks away. Back at home, Moyao and Zhou get into a heated discussion about why he revealed his true identity. Here we learn that Zhou was adopted by Moyao's father, and the two are like brothers. Because of this, Zhou feels it's his responsibility to take care of Moyao. However, the latter warns him not to interfere, and instead hands him a set of numbers to investigate. The following day, Moyao takes Lin to meet Wang Ma. The nanny gets straight to the point and reveals that on the day of her father's death, Chishan and Yu Wei were with him in his study. This shocks Lin, and she realizes that her fiancé and Yu Wei lied about the surveillance footage. They had claimed that the camera didn't show anyone else in the room. After this, Moyao drives Lin back home, and she finally apologizes to him. Later, as Moyao is changing his clothes, Lin abruptly barges into the room and says that she wants to drink. When he refuses to join her, she starts drinking alone and expresses feeling deceived by Yu Wei. He then asks if she has any doubt about her fiancé at all. Lin insists that Shishan loves her deeply and would never betray her. He even risked his own life to save her after a car accident a few years ago, leaving him scarred. He then asks if the person who saved her really was Chishan. Moyao knows that it was himself that risked everything to save Lin that day, only for her to mistake him for Chishan. This clearly upsets him, but he doesn't say anything. Meanwhile, Joe discovers that the numbers Mayao gave him from earlier relate to a property certificate number. He also learns that the person responsible for the hostile takeover of the Kin family's assets is Jin Gu Fo's confidant, Liao Wan Chan. Later at night, as Chishan and Yu Wei are sleeping together, Lin comes over, startling them. She asks them for the surveillance footage from the study, but they claim to have already thrown it away. Hearing this, Lin is convinced Yu Wei is lying, so she decides to investigate her. 
Moyao offers to help and he takes her to Joe, who is good at investigating. On the other hand, when Shashan learns that Lin has gone out with Moyao, he gets nervous and keeps trying to call her, but none of his calls go through. When she returns, Shashan harshly berates her for trusting Moyao too much and going out in the middle of the night, but our girl warns him that she can do as she damn well pleases. After she's gone, Shashan pulls Moyao aside and reveals that he knows he's the son of the King Group's owner. Chishan then questions his motives for working as a bodyguard for the Lin Group. In reply, our hero casually mentions that he, just like Chishan, is there to make money from the Lin family. But he has modest demands and is content with a tenth of what Chishan would receive. However, Moyao warns both Chishan and Yu Wei not to harm Lin in any way while pursuing their financial interests. He asserts that he won't hesitate to take action against them if necessary. In the next scene, Lin Guofu's lawyer seeks out Moyao and transfers 51% of its shares to his name. This is because Lin Guo Fu felt guilty over the forceful acquisition of the Qin group. Later when Moyao meets Zhou, the latter reveals that he possesses proof of Lin Guo Fu's wrongful takeover of the Qin group. This information could potentially bankrupt the Lin family. However, Moyao refuses to take legal action, stating that Lin would be the one to suffer the consequences. He then asks Zhou to just drop the matter and leave it alone. Next, Moyao visits Lin in her room and she recognizes him immediately by his distinct scent. This makes her smile, indicating that she has started to fall for him. The following day, Lin receives a call from Zhou who says that he has collected information about Yu Wei and asks to meet. Moyao has gone to see a sick mother, so Lin meets up with Zhou without informing him. Afterward, Joe escorts her to an underground parking lot where two hired thugs intimidate and try to frighten her. He wants to convince her to fire Moyao. Although his actions were intended to be harmless, Joe doesn't know that these two men have also been paid by Yu Wei, and after he leaves, the men approach our girl and begin harassing her. Later, Moyao returns from the hospital and through Joe, discovers that Lin is in the underground parking garage. Worried, he rushes to the scene, but by the time he arrives, the two thugs have already removed her coat. Enraged, Moyao swiftly subdues them and forces them to reveal who hired them, a woman wearing a diamond necklace. As soon as Lin hears this, she realizes that the description of the woman matches her close friend, Yu Wei. Afterward, Joe and Moyao confront the backstabbing bitch. Joe suggests undressing her as a form of retaliation, but Moyao refuses, opting not to stoop to her level. Instead, he smashes Yue's phone and instructs her to leave. Seeing this, Joe believes that Moyao has become emotionally attached to Lin. He raises concerns about how she might react if she learns that her father caused Moyao's father's death. In response, our hero says that they must never let her find out. Afterwards, upon learning about Yue's actions, Chishan reprimands her for her reckless behavior. Later, Lin also questions her about her recent stay at the house and whether she's hiding something. Although Yue pretends not to understand, Lin directly confronts her about her intentions. She brings up the confessions of the two thugs from earlier, who stated that a woman with a blue heart-shaped necklace had given them orders. This revelation leaves Yue panicked and unsure how to respond. Right then, Chishan arrives, takes Lin aside, and plays a recording of Moyao. In it, the latter is allegedly conspiring against the Lin family. Upon hearing Moyao's voice, Lin is devastated and says she needs time alone to contemplate and discern who is telling the truth. Later, as she is taking a shower, Lin can't help but dwell on the words of Chishan and Moyao echoing in her mind. This makes her increasingly agitated. Unfortunately, as she gets dressed and exits the bathroom, she accidentally slips and hits her head on the bathtub. Moyao hears the commotion and rushes in to find her lying on the floor. He lifts her gently and places her on the bed. Lin, who is in a lot of pain, softly questions why he is hiding things from her. When she asks if he's plotting to gain her family's wealth, Moyao remains silent. As a result, she gets angry and asks him to leave. This upsets Moyao, and he storms out in frustration, slamming the door behind him. Lin doesn't try to stop him, and because of her throbbing head, she closes her eyes to rest. Surprisingly, when she reopens them, she can see. Filled with excitement, she approaches her former bedroom and unexpectedly hears intimate sounds coming from inside. When she opens the door, she sees Yu Wei and Shishan in a compromising situation. Suppressing her resentment and pain, Lin pretends that she still can't see and lies that she had a bad dream that jolted her awake. She then expresses her wishes to always have the two by her side. Yu Wei readily agrees, and as Lin turns to feel her way out, the cheating bastards continue to make out. After stepping out, Lin can no longer contain her despair and anger, and tears stream down her face. She then realizes why Moyao always warned her to be cautious of the people around her. In the next scene, Moyao is taking a bath when Lin arrives outside his door. She tells him that her vision has been restored and that she caught Shashan and Yu Wei betraying her. 
However, when she sees Moyao's face, she immediately recognizes him as the person who'd had a confrontation with her father. Moyao explains that things are not as they seem. He was paid by Chishan to change her father's will, but he never laid a finger on him. Despite this, Lin insists that Moyao is responsible for her father's death and asks why he didn't admit it earlier. When she grows increasingly angry, Moyao suddenly kisses her. He then mentions that the situation is very complicated and doesn't want Lin to get dragged into it. However, she remains stubborn and walks away. After she leaves, Moyao drowns his sorrows in alcohol, and Joe tries to convince him to quit his job guarding Lin. However, Lin thinks that Shoshana is now a greater threat to Lin now that she can see. The following morning, Lin awakens and her servant requests her presence downstairs. He informs her that Mr. Chishan has brought a lawyer and wants her to sign the will. Lee ponders whether Moyao's words are true and decides to go downstairs to find out. She pretends to still be blind, and when the lawyer reveals the contents of her father's will, she notices Chishan's shock. He keeps saying that the will is wrong, and Lin realizes that what Moyao had told her was indeed true. Eventually, the lawyer reads the will, which only mentions 60 million won in cash and three houses. It doesn't mention any shares from the Hong Fu group, which he personally created. Hearing this, Chishan looks disappointed, and Lin calmly stamps her hand. She then asks the lawyer who the shares were transferred to. The latter states that he lacks information on that and that it's above his pay grade. Later, while walking down the road, Joe intercepts Lynn and makes some comment about her eyes being healed, but her heart is still blind. He says that she can't see the lengths Moyao has gone for her. In reply, Lin explains that it's merely a bodyguard job and there's no need for his concern. But Joe angrily retorts that Moyao deeply cares for her because he has feelings for her. Lin is stunned by this revelation and Joe hands her the USB drive containing the information collected on Yue. He then leaves, saying he hopes to never see her again. At his house, Moyao is drinking alcohol and the room is in shambles. Suddenly, Lin calls him, saying she's outside. Moyao hastily opens the door and when she enters, she asks him to sign an agreement. She wants to hire him as her personal assistant from now on. Moyao questions why she decided to trust him again, and Lin responds by saying that if he had ill intentions, he would have acted on them already. She also mentions that Joe outed him about his feelings for her. Hearing this, Moyao blushes and admits that he indeed likes her. After this, Lin questions him about Shishan's potential involvement in her father's death. Moyao believes it's highly likely, given Shishan's recent change to the will and the expedited burial of her father. Hearing this, Lin is determined to find evidence as she refuses to believe that a murder could happen without leaving any traces. She then tells Moyao to keep her recovery a secret. In the next scene, we see Yue and Shishan having a romantic time at home. Suddenly, Moyao guides Lin into the room, catching the two off guard. Chishan questions why Lin is still keeping Moyao around, and she explains that she wants to give him a chance to prove himself. Chishan argues it's dangerous to have him, but Lin insists that she isn't afraid because her two supporters are there to look out for her. The scene then shifts to Lin's birthday where Yue presents her with an expensive gift. However, Lin mentions that her favorite gift is the engagement ring given to her by Chishan, the one with the square diamond. Yue tries to hide the ring on her hand, but the guests have already noticed it. Moyao then swiftly takes the ring from her and gives it to our girl. Heartbroken, Lin accuses her friend of stealing her engagement ring and questions if she wants her fiancé too. Yue is deeply embarrassed by this and she looks to Shishan for help, but he remains silent, so she flees the scene without uttering a word. After the party, when only Lin and Moyao remain, he can't help but admire her acting skills. Despite Yue's betrayal, Lin wants to keep her and Shishan around to let them make their own mistakes. Moyao is somewhat anxious, but Lin is confident that Yue will come to her, begging. As anticipated, she arrives in tears, pleading with Lin to let her stay because she has nowhere else to go, promising to be a better person from now on. Later, Yue confronts Jashan, upset that he distanced himself from her and didn't back her when she needed it. He defends himself by saying that he couldn't intervene under those circumstances. There were simply too many people, and he didn't want to arouse any suspicions. Following this, the two discuss how to get rid of Moyao, believing that today's incident was orchestrated by him. Yue also suspects that Lin has completely regained her eyesight. Later in the evening, Lin sneaks into Shishan's room to search for evidence against him. There, she finds a substantial insurance policy that he took out on her, with the intention of profiting from her death. As she's about to take a picture of it, she hears Shishan and Yue enter the room, so she quickly hides behind a screen. The two of them discuss how to transfer the 60 million won Lin inherited ASAP, fearing it might become impossible if she regains her eyesight. Right then, Shishan notices that someone has tampered with his documents and begins searching the room. He approaches the screen where Lin is hiding, 
freaking her out. But with perfect timing, Moyao bursts into the room, questioning Jashan about the people who came earlier. He also lures him outside the room to discuss a major business deal downstairs. After the coast is clear, a furious Lin walks out of the room. Downstairs, Moyao confronts Deshaun and calls him out for his intentions to transfer Lin's money. After this, he exits the room and goes straight to meet Lin, and reminds her not to take any risk. In reply, a frustrated Lin states that Deshaun and his cohorts are trying to harm her. Moyao comforts her, assuring her that she isn't alone and that he will protect her. Meanwhile, Yue discovers that 51% of the shares have been transferred to Moyao, and she shares this information with Chishan. He then confronts Moyao and threatens to report him for fraud. However, our hero calmly hands his phone to Chishan, suggesting he should call the police, while pointing out that before Lin Guifu was buried, Lin kept a lock of his hair, which will reveal the cause of death. Later, Lin, Moyao, and Zhou watch the surveillance cameras. As expected, she notices Chisan sneaking into her room to look for her father's hair sample. While it's clear that he's involved with her father's death, there is no actual proof. Sensing Lin's anxiety, Moyao reassures her that they will find the proof they need. Later, Lin goes to Chishan's room to look for evidence. Unfortunately, he walks in and catches her in the act. Lin covers her ass by saying that she came to retrieve a seal, but Chishan is increasingly suspicious of her. He uses a pen to test her sight, but she calmly and convincingly deceives him into believing that she's still blind. After a while, Moyao arrives and whisks Lin away to a parking lot. He scolds her for taking such risks alone. In reply, Lin kisses him, explaining that she doesn't want him to be in danger because of her. At that moment, a man wearing a hat and a mask arrives. Sensing the danger, Moyao instructs Lin to quickly get in the car and drive away. He then turns around and rushes towards the man. As the two engage in a fight, Moyao's arm is injured. But before the man can cause any more damage, Lin drives up with blinding headlights and a blaring horn. Compromised, the man runs away. Lin then gets out of the car, helps Moyao, and quickly drives away. Once back at their residence, she affectionately tends to his wounds. During this, Moyao warns Lin, saying that if something happens to him, she should give up her search and stay away from Chishan. However, our brave girl assures him that she won't let anything happen to him. In the next scene, Moyao kicks down Chishan's door and confronts him, demanding to know why he is targeting him. Chishan coldly replies that he should consider himself lucky because his mother might not get so lucky. This triggers Moyao, who smashes a wine bottle on the table, ready to attack Chishan's neck. However, the coward offers a solution. If Moyao transfers the company shares to him and leaves Lin immediately, he will call off the Jing Sing Society goons he hired to kill Moyao. After the confrontation, Moyao returns to Lin's room and finds her waiting for him with a birthday cake. Our hero is deeply touched by this gesture, as it has been many years since he last celebrated his birthday. She then kisses him, and finally, the two put aside their reservations and share their true feelings. Following this, Moyao changes his clothes and prepares to go out. Lin notices a long scar on his lower back and asks about it. Moyao recalls a time when he saw Lin in a car accident and risked his life to rescue her from the wreckage, injuring himself on the shattered glass. However, he doesn't tell her this and lies, saying that it's a childhood injury caused by misadventures. Lin then declares that she wants to watch the sunset with him, just like her father used to do when he was alive. Moyao silently hugs her, and Lin kisses him again, this time making her feelings clear. The next morning, Lin wakes up and finds a letter on her bedside table. It's a brief message from Moyao, asking her to take care of herself. Lin panics and searches everywhere, but she can't find Moyao. She tries calling him, but his phone is turned off. Desperate, she sends him voice messages, pleading with him to return. Meanwhile, he's having breakfast with Zhou. The letter advises him not to put his life at risk, but Moyao doesn't listen. He knows how the Jingxing society works. He has to withstand three attacks to lift the threat on Lin. Moyao then gives Zhou some instructions and asks him to take care of his mother and protect Lin. In the next scene, Moyao engages in three rounds of life and death battles with the members of the Jingxing society, suffering severe injuries in the process. The members of the Jingxing society admire him, having never encountered an opponent quite like him before. Later, when an exhausted Moyao sits down on the ground, he gets a call from Joe, asking him to come home as soon as possible. When he arrives home, he finds Lin and Joe shit-faced. As he stares at them in disbelief, Joe departs, asking our hero to take care of his girl. Lin then hugs Moyao tightly, and during this, she notices his necklace, the same necklace worn by the man who saved her from the car accident. It finally dawns on Lin that the person who rescued her was none other than Moyao. 
When confronted, he explains that he kept it from her because he didn't want the fact that he'd saved her to clout her emotions. Lynn assures him that her love doesn't stem from any kind of rescue. She tells him that she trusts him completely, and no matter what, she will believe in him. The next morning, Lin wakes up early to prepare breakfast for the two of them. Moyao hugs her from behind and playfully suggests they finish what they didn't complete the previous night. However, Lin becomes shy and deeks him out, saying she'll make him coffee. Following this while getting coffee beans from the living room cabinet, she stumbles upon Moyao and her dad's equity transfer agreement. There is also a diary written by Moyao, which mentions how he studied Lin's preferences to gain her trust. This new revelation devastates her, and she asks Moyao why he did this. In response, he explains that things were complicated back then, and Lin's father did transfer the shares to him. As far as the rest goes, he feels something is amiss and wants to investigate thoroughly. Seeing that Moyao is still hiding something from her, Lin feels conflicted and decides to leave. All Moyao can do is watch her leave with teary eyes. Next, Lin returns home and looks through some old photo albums. There, she sees a picture of her father, and behind it is a message left by Moyao, suggesting she choose the people around her very wisely. Lin then realizes that Moyao deeply cares for her, but doesn't understand why he hasn't been able to show it. The following morning, Lin wakes to find Yue standing by her bed. The letter reveals that she visited the hospital and discovered that Lin has regained her eyesight. Hearing this, our heroine glares at her, dropping the facade and telling her that she is well aware of Yue's affair with Chishan. Surprisingly, the Ho admits it without any shame. A puzzled Lin states that she's always treated her like a sister, not a subordinate. Unable to tolerate Lin any longer, Yu Wei snaps. She reveals that Moyao used to be in the upper crust of society until Lin Gufo took control of King Group, causing Moyao's father to take his own life, which led to the family's bankruptcy. Meanwhile, Chishan contacts the Jingxing Society and learns that their plan has failed. It dawns on him that Moyao's initial cooperation was just a ruse to buy some time. Now, having mortgaged his remaining shares for a high-interest loan, he's left with no money. Desperate, Chishan decides to seek forgiveness from Lin. He claims that Yue orchestrated everything, and his real intentions were simply to get to know Lin. However, our heroine sees through his bullshit and calls him out. She accuses him of having a hand in her father's death, which became obvious when he tried to steal his evidentiary hair. Chishan realizes that she had set a trap for him, but nonetheless, he smiles, assuming that she has no evidence against him. Lin then boldly tells him that all the evidence will eventually come to light. Chishan snaps, pins her to the couch, and just as he's about to strike her, Moyao arrives. The two face off, and with an evil grin on his face, Chishan says, the game has just begun. After he departs, an irate Moyao removes the surveillance camera from Lin's room. He is fed up with her taking risks in order to get Chishan to say or do something incriminating. The next morning, Lin wakes up to find Moyao is gone and believes that he is left for good this time. This obviously makes her sad, but she reasons that it might be for the best. Right then, she receives a call from Joe, who asks her to come to his place ASAP. When she arrives, Joe admits that Moya was injured defending her, and he arrived home drenched in the rain and collapsed. Worried, Lin rushes upstairs to find him resting. Seeing her distress, he realizes how much she cares for him. The two then set aside their differences and embrace. Due to his weakened state, Moyao falls asleep while Lin receives a text message and opts to meet Chishan alone. In his car, Chishan continues to question her about her relationship with Mayao, but Lin remains steadfast. Seething with hatred, Chishan swears revenge against Moyao, but Lin warns him against it, saying that she can provide evidence of his culpable involvement in a murder. Chishan smiles wickedly and claims that he has already destroyed all the evidence. He then reveals that he possesses enough evidence of Moyo's embezzlement to ensure his imprisonment. Lin asks what he wants, and Chishan shamelessly says that he wants them to get married. Meanwhile, Moyao wakes up to Lin's absence. This sends him into a panic, so he rushes downstairs in search of her. When he sees Lin returning with groceries, he embraces her tightly, fearful that she might ultimately vanish from his life. Lin also clings to him and expresses her desire to make amends for him. Next, she seeks out Yu Wei and puts an end to their 20-year-long friendship with a resounding slap. She then takes the engagement ring Chishan gave her and hands it to Yu Wei, telling her to keep it. Elsewhere, Joe finally uncovers the truth. He learns that the true instigator behind the hostile takeover of the Kin Group was not Lin Fu, but his deputy, Liao Wanshan. It turns out that Liao Wanshan is Chishan's foster father. 
Armed with evidence, Moyao confronts Yue about her involvement with Chishan and blackmails her into handing over the surveillance videos from Lin Guofu's study the day of his death. Yue agrees to cooperate, but she doesn't want to hand over the surveillance footage, which clearly holds a massive secret. The following day, Chishan's company receives a legal notice that their contract has been cancelled due to fraudulent activities. Enraged, Chishan confronts Moyao, blaming him and threatening to retaliate against him and Lin. Meanwhile, Yue watches the footage from the study, finally revealing what happened on that fateful day. The old man earnestly implored Chishan to leave his daughter. The latter, however, violently pushed Lin Guofu to the ground, leading to a heart attack that ultimately caused his death. Right then, Chishan confronts Yue, accusing her of betrayal due to her alliance with Moyao, which is causing his financial losses. Yue swiftly denies the accusations, but Chishan points out that only she knew about the things that Moyao is now using against him. He wants the video footage from the study, but when she refuses, Chishan violently assaults her. He drags her by her hair, smashes her head with a vase, killing her. Later at night, Lin invites Moyao to have a drink, and he asks about her unusual behavior. She explains that it's been a while since they shared a drink. They then joke about the time she got him drunk in order to verify his identity. After a good laugh, Lin expresses her frustrations about not being able to bring Chishan to justice. Despite knowing the truth, he is still roaming around a free man. In response, Moyao reassures her that they will eventually find the evidence to hold Chishan accountable for his crimes. After throwing back a few too many, Moyao passes out. Lin gently kisses him, determined to meet with Chishan and end this once and for all. The next day upon waking up, Lin notices Mo Yao's absence and finds a note beside her table. The note tells her not to be so obvious the next time she decides to drug him. He promises to return soon and urges her to wait in the room until then. Alarmed, Lin rushes to open the door but finds it locked. She then calls the police for assistance, claiming that she is stuck. Elsewhere, Moyao arrives at an abandoned warehouse which is supposed to be the meeting place for Chishan and Lin. The evil guy isn't surprised at all, as he knows Moyao won't stay idle when Lin is in trouble. Chishan cockily states that since Moyao has now come, he won't leave alive. He then discloses his plan to take over the Kin family. Realizing the depths of Chishan's treachery, Moyao clenches his teeth. But before he can make a move, a dozen or so henchmen appear behind Chishan. Regardless, Moyao removes his clothes and prepares to fight. Meanwhile, Zhou visits Yu Wei and discovers her lifeless body in her room. She is still clutching the pen drive containing the crucial surveillance camera footage. Zhou promptly takes the card and contacts the police to report the incident. Back at the warehouse, Moyao fights valiantly despite being outnumbered and stabbed in the abdomen. Chishan approaches him for a final strike, but Lin arrives in the nick of time and saves him. Enraged, Chishan grabs her and holds her at knife point. He then forces Mayao to kneel before him and beg for her safety. Seeing his arch nemesis kneel before him in this manner, Chishan feels immense satisfaction. He watches the tragic couple and laughs maniacally, believing he has complete control. However, Moyao summons his strength, grabs Chishan's wrist holding the dagger, and stabs him in the chest. Witnessing both of them bleeding profusely, Lin calls an ambulance and holds Mayao tight. In the final scene, we learn that Chishan survived the stab wound, but justice is served when he is sentenced to death for homicide, robbery, fraud, and racketeering. Meanwhile, Lin fusses over a bouquet of white chrysanthemums before she goes to visit her father's grave. Moyao is waiting for her with an umbrella. She then takes his arm, and together they visit her father's grave. The drama ends with the couple finally finding the peace they always wanted.